I'm here at HBE Discover in Las Vegas with Pat Smoker from Purdue. And tell me a little bit about what is precision agriculture? Well, one can think about precision agriculture as uh, creating uh, precision in terms of the application of uh, inputs like uh, fertilizers, water, uh, herbicides, insecticides, etc. So it's very precise versus you know spraying a whole field with a herbicide as an example. And it's precision in terms of measuring uh, yield, the machinery, and how efficient that is operating, at what speeds are ideal for the best gas uh, mileage, for example, and uh, anything that you might think of in terms of uh, the quality of the of the uh, product itself, right? Uh, because if we can precisely create the inputs that uh, produce the ideal output or, or the, the crop, whatever that consumable is, uh, then we can engineer it uh, both uh, from a genetics standpoint, from controlling it just by the inputs that, that we put uh, on the field. So, so, so what are the what are the big advantages to that precision agriculture? Is it like lower cost savings, higher yield, all the above? All the above. You certainly want uh, the economic situation to be well for the folks in the farming industry, right? and so lower inputs means lower cost, and uh, the precision uh, gives just the right amount of inputs to uh, that particular crop, which means a better yield, and uh, from the standpoint of uh, worrying about what, how we're treating the earth. Uh, we keep the ecological uh, impacts very low when we precisely uh, apply anything uh, onto a field and you start uh, eliminating the issues with watershed. You know that uh, fertilizers and nitrogen can be bleed, bleeding into you know our, our water systems, etc. So uh, those are the three primary advantages of precision ag. And this, this sounds like we're primarily talking about plant agriculture, not, not like uh, livestock. No, both. both? In fact, yes. Uh, sensors are being used to uh, develop the ideal living conditions for an animal. So animal well-being is an important uh, topic that we worry about in the, in the College of Agriculture at Purdue. Uh, we worry about uh, you know, when an animal is, is ill or stressed in any way, we want to know about that and so that we can uh, take action, whether that's a, a vet or, or maybe it's getting an animal in because they're giving birth, as an example. So, so sensors, both uh, wearable on the, on the animal as well as sensors that measure movement. Uh, and if the movement uh, gets slower, then you, you assume something's happening, maybe the air conditioning or the fans rather uh, aren't working and so the, they're getting too warm and, and they stop moving around. Uh, we can tell when animals are jumping around, they're happy, you know, we know that. And so uh, what kinds of uh, surfaces do we provide those animals so that uh, they're the most comfortable and we often measure that by how well they're interacting and playing uh, together. and. Uh, those, when they're young calves, for example. So uh, many, many areas in, in terms of uh, precision ag with animals too. And again, it, we're trying to feed them uh, the right nutrients and the right amount of uh, food and water that uh, keeps them healthy and doesn't create too much uh, fat or cause health issues. And so uh, the, we have all kinds of mechanisms that, that control uh, those kinds of things that uh, that are essentially inputs. Uh, so you also. so you mentioned. I, um, sorry to interrupt, but uh, mm -hmm. so you mentioned um, sensors mm -hmm. and you mentioned wearables as as two things that are important to this process. So how then? I, I'm assuming that means Internet of Things, IoT. How does IoT and then and then edge computing play into what you're talking about with precision agriculture? Well, there, there's two areas that we were worried about in the College of Agriculture at Purdue. Uh, one is creating technologies that translate to uh, decision making, so informed decisions uh, for farm management. There's uh, food safety that we worry about, so that's the entire supply chain of food. If you think about uh, 
data providence. You want to know where your food came from. We, we want a blockchain kind of a concept there that we could uh, pinpoint anything. We, if you think about being able to uh, ID a truck that didn't keep the temperatures low enough during transport, we kind of want to know that. And maybe the, the, uh, the, the store that uh, puts this stuff on the shelf wants to know that. And, and so uh, IoT for that application is uh, more on the uh, business side or the, uh, of the equation. In research, uh, we collect data that informs uh, discovery, right? And so uh, sensors that are operating 24-7 uh, give us much more data than we could get if we were manually going out and observing these things ourselves. So it uh, uh, plays a big role in phenotyping, as we call it. And phenotyping is just the observation of any attribute, whether it's uh, molecular or physical and everything in between. Uh, we want to measure it and understand uh, the impact of any given treatment, any given hybrid uh, breeding or transgenic uh, kinds of efforts. We, we want that as real time as, as we can get it. So the IoT network that HPE uh, and Aruba uh, just uh, build uh, it comes in a number of varieties. And, and the one that uh, serves our research needs is uh, field scale wireless network. So that's 1,408 acres in one case uh, where we have the Agronomy Research and Education Center. And uh, in that case, uh, we're looking at lowering the time to discovery uh, such that uh, we remove any kind of uh, low value task from the faculty so they can focus on the science and we get data and analytics uh, more real time. So if you think about um, a, a, a combine as an example, we could go down the field, we could learn all the machine data that in terms of RPMs and the amount of uh, torsional pressure on, a, on the power takeoff shaft, you know, all those kinds of things that can be monitored on a machine, combine that with yield data, uh, positioning data for, for satellite GPS, and understand a lot about a square foot of soil that, and how it produces versus, uh, you know, the, the square foot beside it. And believe me, the soils vary that quickly in, in many cases. So uh, if we send that real time uh, to uh, high performance compute clusters or whatever it takes to analyze that data, the output of that, so this is visualization data, so we've taken raw data and translated it and or extracted features out of it, uh, send it for compute and so that can be consumed by faculty almost before the implement is parked in the shed. Oh wow, yeah. that's, a, that's an impressive turnaround time. Yeah. So I, we're, we're talking about this in a research context. Is mm -hmm. this something that, that Purdue is looking to get out into the, the wider farming world? Is it already out in the wider farming world? Well, uh, certainly the research is only valuable to the world if it translates into improving lives and livelihoods. And so uh, while research is important, uh, to discovery, once discovered, uh, we have a number of mechanisms to uh, get that technology out to where it's useful to the rest of the world. Uh, the first is by our uh, obligation as a land grant institution, and the land grant is uh, in the lower 48. There's um, there's a university, a, usually an R1 or a research one uh, institution that's responsible for taking unbiased research information to the constituents of that state. And, and it's called uh, uh, Purdue Extension in our case. And uh, there we have uh, you know, master level uh, folks that are taking science from Purdue, uh, engaging their county constituents uh, in terms of learning how to use that technology that, that uh, has been discovered at Purdue. The other way is we, we have a lot, an incubator system, you know, that uh, creates uh, economic development in, in the forms of startups and new businesses and, and new markets uh, that uh, is very strong at Purdue also. Uh, 
We have a, a research park in which a lot of startups that uh, begin from discoveries at Purdue uh, get their first taste in, in business and, and create that uh, accessibility to the rest of the world. All right. Well, it'll be exciting to see how this rolls out into the world as, as it does. Thanks, yes, Matt. Yes, thank you.